Every six months, half of the CentOS Board of Directors is up for re-election. In January, the Board of Directors selected two new directors, Amy Marish and Celeste Lynn Paul. In this interview, I speak with Amy Marish about her path to the board and what she hopes to see in her year or years on the board. Thank you for taking time to speak with me. And more importantly, thank you for being willing to, to sit on the CentOS board. Um, it's a bit of a thankless job and it's a lot of time investment and uh, we just really appreciate your expertise there. Um, I want to start with with introductions. How did you how did you get to this point? What what led you to involvement in the project? Well, first off, thank you for having me. So my name is Amy Marish. I am a principal technical marketing manager at Red Hat. But as far as I'm concerned, I am a member of the community on the board. And I think that's important. I am not re representing Red Hat and I will always represent the community first. My involvement with CentOS has been as a longtime user um, since it broke off from the original Red Hat Enterprise Linux. And I've been involved with the Cloud SIG. And I assume that's how I got nominated to run for the board in the first place. I do bring a history of having board experience, which I think is a nice addition to the board as I serve on the Open Infrastructure Foundation Board of Directors, as well as the CentOS Project Governing Board. So I think I can bring a lot of openness to the project board, as well as experience. The Open Infrastructure Foundation is a very different beast from CentOS. Um, can you, you've just been to the one board meeting as a director, but you've been attending the board for a long time. I was wondering if you could tell me some comparisons. What have you observed that's, that's similar and different and how do they inform each other? So the CentOS board is actually very similar to the Chaos board in that you're nominated from within or from the community, and then they make the decision on who's voted in. Um, whereas with the Open Infrastructure board, I am an individual board member, which means I was nominated by the community. I had to have 10 nominations to get on the ballot and then was voted in by the community. So. I think that's where my stating that I am representing the, the community with CentOS versus mm -hmm. Red Hat is very important because I know how to separate the two positions. If there is something that we want within the community that maybe isn't what Red Hat wants, I'm going to argue the community's point. And I think that's important. So also in open infrastructure, we have the four opens, open community, open development, yeah. and so on. And I think that is so important. And I hope to bring some of that to the CentOS community because that's kind of how I was raised within open source. I was involved in earlier projects such as Zope as a contributor, but not in governance or anything else. It was you know, basically a GitHub repo and you open source your, your yeah. code. You know, so getting involved and going from being an individual contributor who really didn't have company support in that and growing to a leadership position, I think has been something I'm very proud of. And I hope to help others do that within CentOS, within OpenStack, within anywhere. What would you like to see happen in, in CentOS, in, in governance and the project as a whole? What are some of your visions for the coming year or, or years, hopefully? I think a big step is opening the board meetings so it wasn't just invite only. For security reasons on the Zoom calls, I understand where you need to request to get a link, and that's to keep trolls out. I mean, that happens everywhere. But I think things, even if there are not set time limits on board positions, I think it is important to say this is our fall class, this is our spring class, so that you have an idea of someone may choose not to stay on the board any longer. Whether the project decides to do open elections is another thing to consider down the road, but it also depends on the community and the views of the community. Other things that are important and things that I mentioned during the DevConf, ask me anything, is we need to work very closely with Fedora as well as Red Hat in the terms that flow should be seamless. So if someone makes a contribution to Fedora, 
whether it's something we have in CentOS or not, if they want to contribute that to CentOS, process procedure should be very, very similar. And the same if someone puts a bug in with RHEL, because otherwise we're doing a disservice to our community if they have to configure their systems three different ways, have five different logins. Um, you know, you just want everything to be so similar. And there's things we can take advantage of from the Fedora community, like badging. It's such a great way of rewarding someone with a badge. Mm -hmm. You know, even going to OpenStack um, summits in the past, now Open Infra summits, you know, you had badges on your name tag um, based on, you know, things you had contributed to the, to the community. So people knew, oh, you're a contributor. You're on a committee. You do this, you do that. And it's a great way also to start conversations. You know, hey, I was curious about that project. I was curious about that committee. How can I get involved? And people know to walk up to you. You've worked on the on the cloud sig, and and that gives you a perspective that you know, several of our several of our directors are very involved in sigs. Um, what have you seen from the sig side in particular that that you would like to see work better as a community? Well, for the cloud sig itself, we basically revitalized it. So we went through this long list of people and said, "Would you like to still be involved?" And if we didn't hear back, or if they wanted to step off, we cleaned up the list. And then we had elections because we hadn't had a clear leader in a long time. So we had elections. We were very pleased that we had a non-red hatter who also stepped up. So we had a chair and a co-chair and then we lost our co-chair. So maybe for us process on how to get more people involved, because we are trying to do things um, to get more people involved, not just on the RDO project, but within the cloud sig itself. So it's not just RDO. One of the things we recently did was change our meeting cadence so that we fit in with the Fedora Cloud SIG's meeting cadence. Now, they have a different mission than we do, but yet there's interest between both groups. And if we do need to expand between beyond just being infrastructure to how CentOS is um, utilized within people's clouds, that's a great place to go. But the you know keeping it narrow and not being able to bring in other people isn't helping us. So widening our audience and possibly widening our mission does help. So for the cloud, you know, for other SIGs, are they meeting the needs of their community? Can they invite other communities in? Even if it doesn't make sense, it might make sense in the long run to have a healthy growth in the community. A year or two ago, we had some initial progress on the, the code of conduct and then I got busy on other things and kind of dropped that. I was wondering if you could talk a little bit about, and you've you've expressed interest in being involved in that in the past. I was wondering if you could talk a bit about what you would like to see happen there. Yeah, so right now we have a very similar code of conduct to Fedora, which I think is great, especially being that the auth systems are now combined. So what we need to do is reach out to Fedora and make a joint team for any issues to be reported to, so that any decision that is made by that committee and affects both communities is discussed by both communities because if someone got logged off at one they're going to get logged out of the other now it may make sense that you know wow you did that okay we don't want you either um, and i don't mean we don't want you but you have now violated our code of conduct as well so that's one thing um also whether it's that committee or just a regular meeting just to discuss any potential changes that need to be made so they're decided by both communities. You know, that's, you know, a great place where we can become tighter with their community. They have their diversity and inclusion group. We don't have one. I haven't really noticed whether we need to do surveys to find out what our diversity levels are and whether that is something we need, but is something we can look to in the future to make sure that you know, we are meeting the diverse needs of our community and being as inclusive as possible. And I think by going open and opening the board meetings and such, that helps with inclusivity. Because if someone has a concern, they can now come join a board meeting. Is there anything that I have not asked that you would like to highlight in this? I think if I was to be asked anything, I think it's related to where you think the project's going um, long term. And I do think Stream is a great place. And even mentally, even as a CentOS user, I always kind of thought it was between Fedora and RHEL. 
So I think education on that is so important to now say that, yes, we are in between, and this is why we're in between, and this is what you can do with it, and this is the benefits to you. And I think a lot of that will help with some of the negativity of the abruptness of mm -hmm. the announcement, as well as the one year end of life, okay, we're gone. And I know to some degree, you can't keep running everything forever. You have to retire things. But I think as we can educate people, they will understand why stream is the best decision for everybody involved and how they can contribute and what they can get out of it. Thank you for your time. Thank you for, for sharing your thoughts with us. And especially, thank you for sharing yourself with the CentOS community. You're welcome. I'm, I'm very happy to be here.